If you sometimes feel like taking a short nap during the day, it's perfectly normal. Moreover, research has shown that even a brief 10-minute nap during the day can have a very positive effect on your mental abilities and overall health. Anthropologists also believe that our bodies require a two-phase sleep. This is why our body sometimes sends us a signal to take a nap during the day. How does a daytime nap affect our body? And should you develop a new habit of napping during the day? We will delve into this question in detail in this video. So make sure to watch it until the end for some interesting and useful insights. By the way, friends, be sure to subscribe to my channel and click the notification bell so you don't miss any new videos. Suppose you decide to take a short nap during the day, 10 to 20 minutes. Why do we think this is bad? Well, sometimes people feel that napping during the day is bad because they might miss out on important things, lose time, and it's terrible. But if you look closely, it's quite the opposite. A 10 to 20 minute nap is not that much time, but it can improve the concentration and focus of our brain. This means that we will become more efficient and energetic, allowing us to accomplish more for the rest of the day. There was a study where scientists found that a short nap during the day improves our reaction time by 16%. Sleep also helps to improve mood and increase our efficiency for the next few hours. Not surprisingly, many modern business offices install specific capsules where people can come and take a short nap. Unfortunately, this is only typical for the most progressive companies. But there is another example, the Chinese schools, where students also take a nap during the school day, which is encouraged as it is believed to improve material retention. But is there any harm in daytime sleep? In general, you can indeed harm yourself, but avoiding it is not a big problem either. Some people report feeling bad, tired, waking up with a bad mood, and lacking focus and attention after a nap. This is possible, and the reason is that the person slept for too long. If we fall asleep during the day for an extended period, our brain enters a deep sleep stage. If we wake up in this state, we will indeed feel quite tired and exhausted. So, the general recommendation is that a daytime nap should not be too long. Sleeping for a whole hour is already too much. It is recommended to sleep for 10 to 20 minutes, with the upper limit being 30 minutes. A life hack is to drink a cup of coffee before a daytime nap. The caffeine will start to act on our brain in about half an hour, just at the moment of our awakening after the daytime sleep. But this is just a life hack, and I won't recommend drinking coffee unnecessarily. It's a personal choice, and too much coffee is not very good either. A set of recommendations on how to structure our daytime sleep to get the maximum benefit. First, choose the right time for sleep. Typically, this should be between 12 and 3 p.m., it is also necessary to maintain a specific schedule. Just like with regular nighttime sleep, all somnologists and specialists say that the regimen is the most important rule. Go to bed and wake up at the same time. This way, we will ensure a quality deep sleep. The same rule applies to daytime sleep. You need to find your optimal time and go to bed at the same time every day. Then our body will quickly pick up this habit and everything will go smoothly. The next rule is to prepare yourself for a short sleep, that is, fall asleep with the thought that we will nap for 10 to 20 minutes and then briskly go about our business. The psychological attitude before sleep plays a very important role. In our body, there are certain biological clocks and we can indeed program our brains to have a good but short sleep. Also, when we nap during the day, it is essential to choose a place different from our nighttime sleep. The bed where we sleep at night should be reserved only for nighttime sleep. It should be in the bedroom, and that's it. We should only go there at night, while during the day, we should sleep in another place. This is important to avoid conditioning our brain to fall into prolonged deep sleep. It could be a sofa, a couch, a recliner, and so on. The next point is the alarm clock. We cannot allow the daytime sleep to last for an hour or more. It should last a maximum of 30 minutes. So, as a precaution, we can set the alarm for 40 minutes after we lie down on the couch, 10 minutes for falling asleep, and a maximum of 30 minutes for sleep. The alarm goes off after 40 minutes. 
Ideally, of course, waking up without an alarm clock is best. The sleeping room should be slightly cool and well ventilated. Additionally, we should minimize noise as much as possible, either by asking colleagues not to disturb us, not make noise, turn off the sound on our phones, or use earplugs. What should we do after we've had a good nap? Essentially, all we need to do is wash up a little after sleep, turn on the lights if they were off, and do some minimal exercises, some stretching. That's it. We can go back to our activities with a new energy boost. It should be noted that daytime sleep is not compulsory. If you have never napped during the day and have never had the urge to do so, you don't need to force yourself. But if you have had such desires and restricted yourself because you thought it was somehow wrong, then it's a wonderful moment to get rid of these prejudices and develop this extremely beneficial habit. By the way, friends, how about you? Do you take naps during the day? Perhaps you have such a regular habit, or at least occasionally. Share your feelings and experiences in the comments, it will be very interesting. If you liked this video, please like and subscribe to my channel. See you later.